It's a beautiful fall day here in central New York and we're looking at some gorgeous fall colors. Uh, all these leaves are really starting to change now and everyone sort of wants to know why do these leaves really change color and why did they become so many different colors? Well, I'm meteorologist Julia Wyden. I'm here with Dr. Don Leopold from SUNY ESF and we're going to talk about why those leaves change color. So right now we're standing under this tree, we're seeing a lot of yellow, but there's a little bit of green going on there as well. Can you explain what's going on with these leaves? Yeah, Julia, this is a green ash, which is a very common tree in the northeastern United States, and also especially common in urban areas. And so right now in central New York, a lot of these trees are turn, turning yellow. And it happens because the chlorophyll, which is there's still some remnants showing in this leaf with all the green, the chlorophyll starts to degrade yep. as the temperatures decrease during the fall and daylight or day length starts to decrease. And so the chlorophyll degrades and unmasks the yellow pigments, the xanthophylls and the carotenes that are there all during the summer. And so the, that's the coloration process in the trees that turn yellow. And there are other coloration processes that take place in the trees with all the other colors we see during the fall. Is there any chance we can take a look at some of those other trees? It's a great time of year to be looking at the fall colors. Great, let's check it out. Julia, this is one of the most beautiful trees in the eastern United States called the flowering dogwood. Oh, so it's, it's very different from the green ash that we just saw. That one had a lot of yellow to it. This one's looking a lot more purple, a lot more red. What's causing that difference? So flowering dogwood happens to have a different type of pigment and those pigments are anthocyanins and those anthocyanins are responsible for the red and purple coloration. Those anthocyanins are produced anew during the fall as the chlorophyll starts to degrade. And is there any, um, anything that you know, boosts that production of the anthocyanins, maybe sunlight or cold temperatures? Yeah, the weather conditions are really important for the production of anthocyanins. So you have to have really cold days and nights, but, but not really severe freezing. Ideally, lots of sunlight and even a moderate drought will really bring out the anthocyanins. So let's go take a look at another species that might be the most beautiful of all the tree species in the northeastern United States during the fall. Sounds good. Julia, we can't really talk about fall colors and leave out probably the most beautiful tree in New York State, our state tree, the sugar maple. It's also about 20% of all the trees and forest of New York State. Well, these orange colors are just so vibrant. Um, and, you know, just from basic art class, you know that orange is a mixture of red and of yellow. So how does that work with the chemistry of the leaf? Yeah, that's exactly what's happening here. There are all these yellows in the leaf already. And the anthocyanins that are produced this time of year blend with the various yellows to give us these beautiful red oranges you see, especially on sugar maple. Well, it's really neat. And something else that um, you can notice about it is that you have all these oranges in the front, but if you look a little bit higher and towards the back, those leaves still seem to be pretty green. So what's going on there? Now here's an example right here where the leaves uh, that are very deeply colored have been covering the leaves underneath. And it's a great example of how important sunlight is for the fall coloration process. Without the sunlight on this underlying leaf, it, it doesn't have the chlorophyll degradation, doesn't have the production of anthocyanins, doesn't have the unmasking of those xanthophylls and carotenes. Wow, so, so sunlight's an important factor. Um, uh, we've also noticed that other different types of climatological factors, like precipitation, wind, that plays into fall colors. Can you talk about that a little more? Well, it's, it's somewhat complicated in that there are a hundred different tree species in upstate New York, and every one reacts differently to the changes in precipitation, the changes in temperature, the changes in uh, everything else that happens in the fall. And so it's fairly unpredictable within a tree exactly what's going to happen, but it's the rich array of tree species and the how climate varies year after year after year that gives us a fairly predictable, great color in the fall, but a different type of of intensity from one fall to another. So regardless of, um, of you know, the climate and how the weather is changing from year to year, would you say that even one of the worst uh, years of fall foliage here in central New York beats out the foliage anywhere else? Well, we have so many species that capture some of these great color ranges and uh, it, there, you'd be hard pressed to find any place in the country that would have better fall colors year after year after year. So this has all been really interesting. Do you think you could sum up the main few points of why leaves change colors in the fall? Sure, it's very simple conditions that give us the best fall colors are very cold temperatures, but not too freezing because if it's too cold, the leaves will actually freeze off. Uh, moderate drought, but not such a severe drought that the leaves dry up. 
and uh, just the decreasing day length that happens every time uh, this time of year. So really, the best questions for when fall colors will peak really should fall to a meteorologist. Oh, wow. Well, this has all been really interesting to learn about. I certainly learned something new. I hope you did as well. Once again, this is Dr. Don Leopold. I'm meteorologist Julie Wyden, and thanks for watching. So talk to me a little bit more about this.